Today we're checking out the most amazing Chihuahua TikTok you've ever seen. So let's get started. You have to stop relocating the wee wee pad. He needs a little privacy to go to the bathroom. You guys can't leave in the middle of the room. The other two are so good. Pitbull and Chihuahua. Pitbull's behaving beautifully. Chihuahua's losing his mind. It's so common to see small dogs, it's like Chihuahuas, having bad behavior and seeing them more often than you would see in big dogs. Because when you see with a small dog, right, with a little Chihuahua acting and barking like that, what do we do? Just what this lady does. We just pick him up and we act like, oh, it's no big deal. It's a small dog. Who cares if they're, you know, out of control? If that pit bull was doing the same thing and acting that same way, people would be losing their minds. So it's really important that when you have a small dog, you train them and treat them as if they were a big dog. Because the way dogs think, their behavior is all the same. Oh god. Don't don't ever do this. That is such a stupid idea. When you're driving your car and your dog's halfway out the window, all it takes is you have to slam on the brake, somebody rear ends you, something happens and your dog goes flying out the window dead. If you're gonna put your dog in the car, don't let them dangle out the window like that. Put them in a car seat, put them in a crate, make sure they're safe. Little bread, what are you gonna put in there? A little egg? A little egg sandwich? That's what I like to do. A little fried egg in there. I don't think that's where this is going though. Okay, <laughs> definitely not where that was going. <laughs> little guy. Oh, is he ringing the bells to go to the bathroom? Oh, very good. The tiniest little bells I've ever seen. A tiny little dog, too. Well, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Putting bells on the door is a great way to teach a dog how to communicate to you when they need to go to the bathroom. You teach them that when the bell rings, it means the door opens, they can go out to go to the bathroom. My mom is pissed the fuck off at me because last night she decided to braid her hair before bed for the first time ever. I couldn't sleep, so I went over to say hi at 3 a.m. and saw her braid. It reminded me of my favorite rope toy, so oh, no. I grabbed it and tried running across the room. It's actually a good point. Dogs can't confuse things that look similar. A woman with a braided hair, it can look very similar to a dog having a rope toy. Now, I'm not suggesting women, you know, don't braid your hair because the dog doesn't think it's a toy, but it's just something to keep in mind that if your dog has toys, things that look similar to those toys, dogs can't associate or maybe confuse whether or not they are allowed to chew on it. Who's under there? <laughs> a little static, static ears. That's pretty cool. It reminds me of that little toy when I was a kid, like a little ball with like the little electrical purple lines going all over and you would rub your hand all over it and you get the little static. I don't know what those are called, but they always are pretty cool. What are you doing, little Cheetos? Hot Cheetos? Oh, not the hot Cheeto to the dog. Oh God. Cheetos are not great for dogs and flaming hot Cheetos especially are not good. Anything spicy can actually upset dog's stomach. So always be careful with that. A little food aggression. Wait, is that a real dog on the left? No. Oh, it's like a robot. It's a real dog. It doesn't matter. Any kind of food aggression like this is always a problem and you want to make sure you treat. If there was a child approaching that bull or a human hand instead of the robot dog, it's a potential bite waiting to happen. Resource guarding or protecting food is all about fear. The dog has something and they're afraid that whatever's coming is going to take it away. So they feel the need to protect it. If your dog does this, I have a full video actually on the channel already about how to fix this problem. If anyone out there is thinking about getting a chihuahua, I would just like to say they are the sweetest, kindest dogs. They're so gentle, great with kids. Great with they other actually pets, are. Um, and overall just a great dog for anyone to have. Um, I would definitely recommend a chihuahua. Different breeds of dogs can definitely be harder, more challenging for people who don't have a lot of experience with dogs, but chihuahuas actually are not a bad starting dog. Don't be fooled by what was going on in that video. That dog was just playing, was trying to make a funny TikTok. That ah, everything she was doing was just the dog playing, having fun. Aww. I came across this guy. His name is scared. Amigo, and he was surrendered today. Usually I don't sit down in a dog's kennel if they're nervous. That's good what but she's there doing. Was something there. Just put your hand out. Good. That made me want to try. Don't force yourself on him. You should avoid eye contact here. Don't look at him. After waiting patiently, the moment came. There you go. Good. I may look a calm, in there. but I got to tell you, I was so excited that he decided to jump up in my lap to get Aww. some comfort. There you go. That's perfect. Go nice and slow. We don't rush it. We let the dog go at his own pace. That's a boy. Good. While trying to stay away, we don't want to pin on top of the head though, because most dogs don't like that. But that's all right. Long, stressful day. And oh, look, he's actually look how comfortable he is. Putting his head down, resting. That's really good. She did such a great job. Whenever you work with a fearful, shy dog, we don't put them on choke chains and yank them around and cause you know give all these corrections. There's so many trainers I see doing that, and it is so awful. That is not how you address fear. What she just did in this video is exactly what you do. You go slow, you let the dog overcome it at their own pace. You sit there and you just wait. Let the dog come to you. It takes time, and depending on how bad of a situation the dog is in, how fearful they are, how abused they've been, sometimes it can take a long time. But you have to address fear slowly. And when you do, that's how you actually will treat the underlying problem with the dog. Oh, we're back in. 
He's not like Pudgy Woke. No, I'm not Pudgy. No, I don't do Oa. Oh, oh, what is Oa? Oh, oh. I am Peanut. Why are they calling little Peanut Pudgy? Peanut is not Pudgy. Peanut was looking good. Nope, doesn't look like that. You could see at the very start he was licking his lips already to tell you I don't like that. It's a good way to get bit. The dog is tolerating a lot. Just because a dog tolerates something doesn't mean they enjoy it. From the second she started doing that with her fingers, you saw the dog and you pay attention lick his lips. First sign that the dog says, I don't like this. She continued to walk her fingers up. Dog started to growl, started to bare his teeth. Dog saying again, I don't like this. Whenever we see warning signs and we don't stop, eh, you get bit. She's lucky she was fast enough to get her hand away, but in that situation, dog was right to bite. Getting dressed up for the day. A little coat, a little hat. What's that purple thing though? That going on first, a little neck warmer. Got a whole alpha, this dog dresses better than me. The hat and the hoodie combo, okay. okay. It looks cute, but in reality, dogs don't really need all these clothes. In fact, it's probably really uncomfortable for him to have all this shit on him. But he does look good, so we'll give him 10 out of 10 for style, but 0 out of 10 for practicality. So in my house. Stay away. Oh, he got stuck. A little sweater stuck on the pole. That's actually something you do have to be really cautious of. Whenever you put clothes on dogs, you should never leave them on dogs unsupervised. Because that exact thing can happen. They can get stuck on stuff, and then the dog, depending on what they do, sometimes they can pull on their neck, it can cause, you know, circulation problems. It can actually get pretty bad. So if you ever are going to put clothes on your dog, make sure it's only supervised. Great Dane. Where's the chihuahua? <laughs> Look at <laughs> They're afraid of that little thing. <laughs> Chihuahuas just wants to play. Good example of just how much that dogs are dogs. Doesn't matter what breed, what size, dogs all think alike, behave the same way. If a Great Dane wasn't socialized properly, they can be afraid of something that smells like Chihuahua. My dog doesn't like it when me and my fiance cuddle without her. <laughs> well, let me in. What really seems to be going on there is actually the dog's being protected, wanting to make sure that the woman is okay. You can see the dog was actually going after the hand of the guy, so actually kind of seems more like a protective behavior. Do you want to suck me, little sock thief? Come back here, you dropped, you dropped it. There you go. What's up? Not too happy there. You know what? That's an old dog. You can see by the muzzle is super white. Whenever you have an older dog and you pick them up, you always want to be careful because when they have a reaction like that, I mean, I don't know the exact situation there, but whenever you pick up a dog, sometimes, especially when they're older, if you're touching them someplace or holding them where they're in pain, which is quite common because, you know, older dogs have arthritis or can have a bump or lump or something, that's a reaction you're likely to get. Always be super careful when you see an aggressive response kind of come out of nowhere. Super spinner. Chase my tail, chase my tail, chase my tail. A dog chasing their tail just once in a while, yeah, it's no big deal. But if you ever notice your dog chasing their tail and starts to become excessive, almost an obsessive type of behavior, there's a few things you want to check for. Number one, we want to make sure that does the dog have fleas or ticks, because that's one of the areas that fleas and ticks most likely go to is the tail. And when it's making the dog uncomfortable, sometimes they're going to chase the tail because they're trying to get at those fleas and ticks. Another reason their dogs can chase their tails is, again, because they're uncomfortable, but this time because of skin allergies. Treatment for skin allergies then usually is making sure we're careful what the dog is been exposed to, whether it's the type of food they're eating, the grooming products we use, all sorts of things can affect the dog's skin. Worst case scenario, they can chase their tail because they're in pain, whether it's because there's something actually on the tail or maybe their anal glands. So occasional tail chasing, yeah, not a big deal, but when it becomes an obsessive behavior, that's when you want to check it out. Oh, look at those eyes. Poor guy. So whenever you see dogs have kind of those bulging eyes like that, it can be something called ocular proptosis. Chihuahuas are one of the breeds that it's most common for, but any dog breed, I mean like a pug or a bulldog that's got a smushed face, they're the kind of breed that's most likely to have this. It is a pretty rare condition, but it's a serious one. So if you ever see your dog have bulging eyes, you need to go to the emergency vet right away. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell so you get notifications when new videos go live. If you ever need a little extra help training your dog, check out my website, brightdog.com. See you next time.